Hello AP students. Here we are, last chapter, last section. Chapter 12, more about regression. Section 12.2, transforming to achieve linearity. In this section, we should be able to use transformations involving powers and roots to find a power model. Again, our power models are y equals ax to some power. Uh, they're going to make graphic graphically they either make parabolas if they're even power uh, if it's an odd power uh, they make uh, these little squigglies there uh, so again we'll find these transformations involving powers and roots to find a power model that describes the relationship between two variables and then use that model to make predictions we're going to use transformations involving logarithms to find a power to find a power model or an exponential model that describes the relationship between two variables and use the model to make predictions. Okay. Um, so we're going to use logs uh, to help linearize data. Um, so we'll talk about when to use which one. And then we'll determine which of several transformations does a better job. You know, so how do we know? Um, I mean, have tran transformed data and uh, achieve linearity, but what way is the best? Should I use powers or should I use logs? So in chapter three, we learned how to analyze relationships between two quantitative variables that showed a linear pattern. When the two variable, two variable data showed a curve relationship, we must develop new techniques for finding an appropriate model. So in other words, when we take and plot our data, and if we were to see that the data does something like this, well, that's obviously not linear. What can I do to either the x or the y or both uh, so I can linearize the data so then I can use linear uh, regression techniques to uh, analyze the data. And this section describes several simple transformations of data that can straighten a nonlinear pattern. So once the data have been transformed to achieve linearity, then we can use the least squares regression to generate a useful model for making predictions. You know, we can get our y hat equals our a plus bx and uh, use that. And if the conditions for regression numbers are met, you remember that's our liner or linear, however you want to pronounce that in box two, we can estimate or test a claim about the slope of the population regression line using the transformed data. So some of the things we'll be looking at uh, as an example here is when you visit a pizza parlor, you order a pizza by its diameter, say either 10, 12, or 14 inches. But the amount you get to eat depends on the area of the pizza. And the area of a circle is pi times the square of its radius. So again, remember, area is measured in square units. So that kind of information will help you decide if a power model would be useful for here. Um, so again, we can look at the area formula, pi times uh, our diameter divided by 2 squared. Um, if we do a little simple math here, if we bring that square to each piece here, we get this right here, x squared over 4. And then just kind of rewriting the formula. Uh, this is really kind of our, our formula here where this... Uh, is my a value, there is my x, and there is my power. Okay, so this is a power model. Uh, again, with that a value there and the p value being right here. So, although a power model of the form y equals ax to the p describes the relationship between x and y in the setting, there is a linear relationship between x to the power and y. There is a linear relationship between uh, this value here, the area, and our x squared. So if we transform the values of the explanatory variable x, yeah, if we can exp the explanatory variable x, knowing that this is a uh, power model, this is a squared model, we could take and uh, take each explanatory x and raise them to the p power. In other words, in our problem, be squared. If we squared the x's, if we squared those x's, and then plotted them versus their y's, 
our scatter plot would become more linear. So let's look at another example. Imagine that you've been put in charge of organizing a fishing tournament in which prizes will be given for the heaviest, the heaviest Atlantic Ocean rockfish caught. You know that many of the fish caught during the tournament will be measured and released. You're also aware that using delicate scales to try to weigh a fish that is flopping around in a moving boat will probably not yield very accurate results. It would be much easier to measure the length of the fish while on the boat. And that's what they did here. It took a length and they used that uh, to estimate the weight. Length and estimate the weight. Length and estimate the weight for all these different examples. And you see if we plot the data, length versus weight, uh, it's not quite linear. If I look at this, it's kind of curving upwards. And that's the question, is which kind of power model is it? You know, an even power model will have something like this. An odd power model will have something like this. And again, if you look at just quadrant one, where we find kind of our real life data, they look the same. So the question is, what power should we take this? So some of this comes back in kind of maybe some uh, uh, previous classes or other uh, kind of common sense things you might want to look at. And if I'm going to compare length, length is just a one-dimensional measurement. But to create weight, you'd have kind of you have to consider everything about that fish. You know, its length, its height, its weight. You know, so in other words, uh, you look at all three dimensions of that fish that would help determine that weight. Um, so, or in other words, you could think of volume. You know, if you think of volume of that fish, uh, which is related to weight. You know, volume is always in cubic units. So maybe what it might make sense to do then is to come down here and cube the lengths to see if we can then straighten that data out a little bit and compare the cubed, uh, the lengths cubed versus the weight. And there's kind of the same argument here. It says because the length is one dimensional and weight like volume is three dimensional, a power model of the form weight equals a times the length cubed so in other words you know or y equals a x to the third should describe this relationship and this transformation of the explanatory variable helps us produce a graph that is quite linear so i suggest in the previous video if we cube the lengths compared to the weight uh, we get a pretty good linear model uh, for our data so kind of knowing some of those things or knowing how those relationships go uh, can kind of tell us how we might want to transform that data. Well, there is another way to do this too. I'm not a big fan of this way because it doesn't always uh, make as much common sense. But uh, it is so it does have the same relationship. So what they did is instead of cubing the length, they kept the length the same, and then they just cube rooted the weight. It'll still get you uh, some linearity. But we'll give you a different equation that will actually have a cube root in the problem. Uh, so you actually have you know, the cube root of y equals uh, ax. Um, so I think that's just a little more complicated uh, to be working out. Um, so, um, But it is another way to transform the data, achieve linearity. Um, and uh, you know, once we straighten out the curve pattern, the original scatter pattern, we fit a least squared regression lines to that transformed data. Um, but I'm going to suggest that we always, if you know what the power is, if you know what the power is in that relationship, uh, apply it to the x value. Um, and then you can have an equation that's probably more familiar with, to work with here. All right, that's the end of day one for chapter 12.2. So uh, at this point then, you should be able to work on these problems of 19 through 24, which will be a little bit of review of the previous stuff, and then 31 and 33. All right, good luck, and we'll see you in the last video of Chapter 12.